wicked, wicked fly. Welcome to this new season of the Have a Cup of Jahani podcast. So I want to title this new season that I'm embarking on with I'm growing. So this is going to be the season of growth. And um, that's what I'm going to share with you throughout the season. So I thank you for coming over here and sitting with me. And I hope you enjoy. Hello, everyone. So on today's episode, we are going to talk about advice and how to filter out what to take and what to leave at the table. Y'all ready? All right, let's get it. So I've gotten advice, I think like almost every day, uh, somebody tries to squeeze in some sort of advice in there for me. And I like to say that that happens because I am approachable, or at least I look approachable, which is great. And I don't turn the advice away to I'm usually very open to hearing it, to listening to it. Because someone told me a long time ago, don't stop someone from talking um, because you may miss something that is important. Because I, I had the habit of interrupting people. And I took that too hard. And I've, I've been trying really hard. Um, I've gotten better throughout the years to just uh, sit there and allow to uh, the other person to talk and listen. I do interrupt from time to time when I think the other person is being long-winded, but that's another episode. (laughs) But while I'm very approachable and I listen to a lot of advice, I have also learned what to take and what to leave right there. I used to take all the advice and run with it. And It turned out, I think I said it here on the podcast or maybe on one of my social media videos. I used to be like that where I will take all the advice when it comes to writing. And I ended up writing a book that was so not me. That was basically all the advice that I took in. And I told myself, I remember looking at it and I couldn't even do anything with it because it had become something so completely different. Than, than what I set out to do, that I was like, I cannot use this at all. If I were to write this story, I would need to start from scratch. So I ended up just putting it away. And when that happened, that became a big lesson for me to pay attention and to be more logical when it comes to the advice that I take. So that way I can not live a life or, or do something that is not me. And I have thus far lived by the model that I rather fail by my own doing than fail by someone else's doing. (laughs) Meaning that I rather be the one to make the choice, right? And fail than to have followed someone else's choice and failed. Because I have done that before. I have failed by following somebody else's choices And that has felt so much worse than failing by my own accord. So I'd rather just fail by my own accord. And that's what I keep reminding myself. Because a lot of the time, and I think it has to do a lot with confidence too. The more that I grow in confidence, the the less that becomes a problem for me. So someone essentially was telling me how to timeline certain events so that way it could be better for me. But here's the thing, like I listened to it and I held on to that for for a little bit, for a few minutes. And for those few minutes, that kind of sat heavy on my heart. And then I started listening internally a little bit. And that little voice was making me feel as if I was a failure. That feeling of failure, of not doing my best was was creeping up on me. And I was able to stop it in that moment. That's why identifying emotions and identifying that small voice is so important. It's so important to be like within in your feelings uh, when things happen. So that way you can understand what you're feeling and are able to manage it a little bit better. But going back to that moment, I stopped it. 
And I told myself in that moment, I was like, well, this person doesn't understand this and that and this and that. Because the timeline that I made for me was because of various events that I have going on in my personal life and in my writing life. So there's no way that I could have met such timeline. And there was also other things that they didn't know or or would not have understood uh, because are things uh, that I, I hold close to me that are just knowledge that I know. And yeah, and I was able to come out of that after a few minutes and was able to talk to myself once again and explain how I had made the right decision, that I can be confident in that I assess that choice wisely by weighing in everything that I had experienced, by weighing my schedule and commitments that I had, and by weighing in my aptitude for for certain things and my room for growth. And because of that, then I was able to kind of get that monkey off my back per se, that heavy, you're going to fail, you're a failure, you're not doing this right, uh, fear that if I wouldn't have, it would have just gripped me and, and, and completely put me down. And that is what I felt before when I inputted everyone's advice into the work in progress that I was writing when I first started writing. That's what happened. It's that fear that if you don't listen and if you don't incorporate the advice, the things that other people are telling you, that your product is going to be horrible, that the, you're going to fail or that the choices are that you made are the wrong ones. It boils down to just having that fear on your back. And when that happens, it's like in that moment, I caved in. And I'm kind of grateful that I caved in because then it taught me something. Because I think if I wouldn't have caved in, I wouldn't have learned that lesson as good as I did take that for what it's worth, right? But I feel like that mistake really paid dividends in my growth for today. Because of that mistake, I am more confident in my choices. And I I stand more assured of my process in how I choose to do or not to do certain things. And I think the best compliment that I have heard when it comes to my decision-making is from my husband. Because sometimes I'm still in the habit of asking him and being like, Bay, what do you think? Should I do this or should I do that? And he replies with, well, Joa, you would know because you often make the best choices for yourself. So usually when you go with your gut, you are correct. And that is from many years of being together and many years of him trying to make the choice and me just going with what he went and then us not having the best results and um, and then him seeing me making certain choices and having better results. And we have learned that at certain things, In our marriage, I'm the best person to make those choices. And in other things, he's the best person to make certain choices. So we were able to learn through trial and error that in what instances or in what events should I lead versus him lead and vice versa. A lot of lessons here, okay? And I I can't believe I'm going in this aspect. But when it comes to choices and listening to others, advice and opinions. I would say that it's good to understand where that advice is coming from. That is something that I kind of, I learned through, through trial and error is that I need to assess the individual that is giving me this advice. What is their background? Are they an expert in their field? Do they understand my circumstance? Do they understand my life experience? Do they understand me 
in the level that they need to understand me in order to give me advice. You know, so that is that is very important for for people to understand before they take advice from somebody, because somebody may be an expert in their field and maybe the best person to give someone advice in, in that topic. But if they don't know the individual that they're giving advice to, or they don't know them in the level that they need to know them for that specific advice, then it may be the advice that they gave may be erroneous. And that is something that I had to remember to understand and to think prior to accepting somebody's advice. I'm not saying that I'm going to cut them off and not listen to them. I, I, I tend to listen to people because like that person told me long ago, I may find something useful in there. Maybe not the whole thing, maybe not the whole advice, but something in there may be useful to me. So a little bit of time listening, it's usually worth it. Another thing that I had to learn to listen to when it comes to taking advice is to listen to my gut per se, I'm doing air quotes here, right? To listen to that inner voice, that inner wisdom that's already in me. And to, if I have the time, take the time to be introspective when it comes to the the choices. We make choices every single day of our lives, but sometimes I'm talking here about those those life-changing, life-altering choices that oftentimes we go out externally to seek advice because it's so important that we get it right. So I am talking about these instances. So when it comes to these instances, it's important. And it is something that I learned to be confident in my inner voice, my inner wisdom, and to listen to it. Because it is something within us that has this greater understanding of our capability, uh, the environment that we are living in, what we want to embrace, our fears, our strengths, you know, all of this, our inner self understands it. So when we take that pause, that quietness within to tap into that, then we are able to discern the right choice a little bit better. And sometimes what I do is I go to sleep with the question, asking that question to to myself. And I put my eye shades on and um, I put my meditation music on and then I go to bed. And usually I wake up with an answer. More often than not, there's an answer or there's something there that I wake up with. Why? Because my brain was able to rest and my brain was able to then go through that scenario, go through that question and now rested is able to find a a solution that embraces everything that it knows about me. Therefore, it may be the best solution for me. So that is something that I learned for those like big choices that I have made. I have gone to bed with that question and and woken up with something that helped me. Believe it or not, that's a TTP right there. That's a, (laughs) I'm using army tongue. That's a good method to use. Another thing that I do is when I'm very unsure and, and it's not necessarily a personal choice that I need to make. Usually when it's personal, my own life, uh, I'm very much in tune to what I feel is right for me. But when it's like career advice or something, you know, something like that, that is more external to me, I tend to ask different people with very drastically different opinions because I want to get like an array of of choices, an array of opinions and options. And, and usually I know uh, the individuals around me and I know the polar opposites in, in the group. And, and usually I go to those two polar opposite. I know somebody that is overly positive and I know somebody that is very negative. And, and then I seek those opinions. And then uh, try to see where the middle 
of that maybe. And um, and that is something that I do not so much for my personal stuff, but more for my external uh, decision making, because I do want to see the two polarities of it. Right. The most um, advantageous, positive one to the most. Oh, shit, everything is going to go wrong. This is how it's going to look. And then I probably find myself somewhere in the middle when it comes to the choices. So those are three things that I do. I I validate who I'm getting advice from. That's one. Uh, if they're a trusted source, if they're an expert source, and if they are trusted and an expert source, do they know me well enough to give me that advice? Boom. Okay. Um the second one that I do is I go to sleep with it. This is something that I do with my very personal um, choices that I need to make is I go to sleep with that question and I wake up with an answer. And the third one is that I get diverse opinions from usually my most positive source to my most negative source. So that way I can find some sort of uh, middle ground that most likely be more usable for me. And at the end of the day, like I said before, is have confidence in your gut and in what you feel is right, because that is really what has helped me the most. I'm telling you, the more that I grow in in confidence in my abilities and my ability to discern, discern the best choices and, and the best things for me, I I have ultimately made the right decision and I haven't regretted it. So I'm telling you, if you don't do anything else, get to know yourself through meditation, through journaling, and that will help you grow in confidence about yourself and who you are. And then you're probably going to be able to make the best decisions um, for you and are able to tune out those voices that are not really there for your well-being because there's so many of them so many of them all right this was an interesting episode i didn't know it was gonna go this way again once again once again i didn't know it was gonna go that way but i hope you learned something i try to give advice through storytelling, that has usually been my method because I don't want to tell people what to do. Instead, I want to tell people how I did certain things. So that way, if they find some commonality in there, then they're able to grasp at that. Or maybe they may find some inspiration in my story and then be able to make a, a choice that works for them. Um, so that's why I rather just discuss through storytelling than through prescriptive kind of like step by step methods per se, because I don't I don't know your life. I, I don't necessarily know your strengths and weaknesses, your environment. You know those things. So you are the best advocate for your choices, your decisions, your methods. Of, of progressing and moving forward in life. So as always, I hope that through my blunders and through my storytelling, you are able to find something that works for you. And I hope to see you next Wednesday as well. All right, my two amazing listeners out there. Bye. Oh, we could, we could fly. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to follow and subscribe to the show. See you on the next episode. Bye. Oh, we could, we could fly. Uh, uh, uh.